Welcome, everyone. My name is Craig Stickelmeyer. I'm a senior engineer here at Risk Management Professionals. And today I'll be talking a little bit about HAZID versus HAZOP and the key differences and similarities between these two as PHA methodologies. Uh, so if you're tuning into this webinar, I'm assuming you're well familiar with Risk Management Professionals and what we do. If you're new, though, I encourage you to visit our website and check out a full list of services that we provide. And feel free to reach out to our contact info in the bottom right here if you have any questions or any inquiries about our services or if you need support. I'll also leave my contact info at the end of this presentation in case you want to reach out to me directly. All right, so diving right in uh, for a PHA. This is going to be a systematic approach to identifying and evaluating different hazards and risks associated with the industrial process. There are different methodologies we can do to employ this PHA or conduct the PHA. And I've only listed five here. There's even more than what I've looked on the screen, but these are the most common five you'll probably see throughout industry. And today, obviously, I'll be focusing on HAZID and HAZOP, which are two qualitative approaches. However, you can get into more complex approaches with PHA in terms of LOPA and QRA which start to kind of get into a quantitative assessment for different hazards and risks. Like I said, today we'll be focusing more on the hazard and hazard qualitative approaches. So for hazard, like I said, this is a qualitative technique, and this kind of specializes in the early identification of potential hazards within a given process. So some key attributes for the hazard are that it is broad scope, it's going to provide you a high level overview and for those two reasons it's going to be ideal for early product design so when you have less information available at this early stage design you might have you know only process flow diagrams available typically those are what we're going to be going off of to do our hazard where we have a more generalized schematic of a process flow or what the process is going to be we may not have all the details like all the instrumentation we not may not have all the details like all the equipment they're going to be using but hopefully we have enough information depicted on the process flow diagrams to kind of go through and get an idea of what the process flow is going to look like and what hazards could arise looking at those diagrams. Because we'll be early on in the project design, this will be a good time to apply inherently safer design where we are going to be familiar with and identifying different hazards and we want to make sure that if there are hazards that we can eliminate or hazards that we can better mitigate, we want to make sure we can do that now or at least design for it now as opposed to later when, when we may not be as flexible or have as much uh, budget or scope increase in our project design which might you know be later on cause issues so like i said uh, for this one we want to make sure that we're identifying the big tickets and high level consequences for our process making sure that those are going to be well taken care of making sure they're not going to cause any issues or showstoppers later on in our design As for HAZOP, this will be a more rigorous and structured approach. Again, we're still qualitative, qualitatively identifying hazards and operability issues within our process, but this is going to be more of a structured and rigorous technique. So with that being said, we'll be definitely more detailed in our analysis, and for that reason, we're going to be requiring a lot more detail up front to make sure we're doing a good analysis. And uh, that being said, we want to make sure usually that we have piping and instrumentation diagrams. That's usually a must for HAZOP. If we're doing or has up being an existing unit that's already uh, existing and, and already out and running, we want to make sure that we have as much field verified and accurate PNIDs as possible. Make sure that other process safety information is also up to up to par. Um, but one key difference here for the house off is that because we'll be more detailed, we're going to be focusing on our specificity in our analysis. So usually we start with causes in has up. Technically, we start with different deviations that kind of brainstorm us into certain causes that can happen. So we want to make sure that we're being very specific and detailed in terms of what exactly is our cause and how is that going to lead to our consequence and how can we address it better that way. In this case, we it's very typical that you use a set of guide words or deviations uh, for brainstorming different causes for the HAZOP. So these guide words, for example, might be no or low flow, and then we'll kind of brainstorm us into thinking of causes that could lead to no or low flow within a certain part of our process. All right, so in terms of how these two kind of stack up against each other, 
has it, like I said, more suitable for early stage design where you have less information available at the time, but you can still kind of employ a qualitative approach with Hazard in terms of just focusing on those big ticket items, those high level consequences, making sure that those are getting addressed as they need to be early on in the design. And has up uh, still a very good methodology to use during the design phase. <clears throat> However, you might want to be more on the late stage design there where you have more detail to to employ for the for the has up. For example, having you know PIDs developed and kind of you have a better idea of where is going to be more specific on those drawings at that time. Like I said, though, both are suitable for capital design, and both are going to be very complementary in each other. So it's very typical that you might do a hazard early on in the design, and then that same design phase, you know, a few months to maybe a few years later, you might update that hazard and kind of formulate it into a has op where you have much more detail you can apply. Um, you still have all those high-level hazards you identified early on in the hazards, so you don't need to redo those, but you can now apply more specificity to those hazards and better organize yourself around those and kind of show the safeguards that you knew you were going to plan to have and, and show how that risk is going to be addressed or mitigated. Um, so like I said, the hazards are going to be focused on those more high-level hazards. The hazard is going to be more of a specific uh, identification of those hazards. So for example, hazard, you'll focus on the kind of consequence first. And you're not really you're not really kind of concerned with how that cause arises in the hazard. You may not have all the equipment that you might not even know you have yet in that design at the time. So you're kind of more focused on the consequence itself. How are we going to be prepared for this consequence? How are we going to either eliminate it or mitigate it? And in the HAZOP, you're more focused on the cause first and how it's going to lead to certain consequences. So uh, because you have more detail, you have more information available at the HAZOP time, you will be able to identify the specific cause that's leading to this um, consequence. So that's kind of the key difference there. One is a cause-consequence pair, the other one's going to be more of a consequence, and you kind of brainstorm how the causes might arise later on. Uh, in both cases, though, again, they're both complementary to each other. So like I said, they're very viable to use both together, especially within one capital design project. Uh, both are qualitative analysis, so because we are looking at these systems as a whole, we want to make sure that we're identifying what the key hazards are making sure that we're identifying safeguards, making sure that we get any recommendations that we might need to have to address those risks that we're identifying at this time. Um, both the hazard and the HAZOP are gonna, you know, it's typical to have recommendations from those in case anything's not being addressed. However, it's usually more typical to have many more recommendations during the hazard, again, because we don't have much information yet, or we wanna make sure that we're gonna be doing stuff as part of the design later on. So um, when we're doing this early stage design, look ahead kind of in the hazard. It's simple that we have a lot of recommendations that need to get acted on throughout the design phase. And in the HAZOP, you know, we kind of revisit those recommendations that we had during the hazard, say, hey, did we make sure, did we address these things? You know, we had a recommendation here to add an alarm. We had a recommendation here to evaluate this a little bit further in the design. Did we do that? And where did we, you know, what conclusion did we come to? Um, typically, you want to make sure you have a hopefully less recommendations during the hazard phase because you've already identified and then the pre-work in the hazard of all those big ticket items. But of course, later on in the design, you might have more information that you didn't have before. So you might find new hazards um, that come up during the design. And hopefully those are not as big as showstoppers that you might have identified during the hazard, but nonetheless, they still need to get addressed. And so you, it's, I'm not saying you're not gonna have zero recommendations during the hazard because you might have some new information that you've stumbled upon. But for the most part being, these definitely will have their key differences um, and, you know, definitely are, have, are better suited at different times than capital design. And even outside of capital design, you can employ both these approaches. Have typically the more preferred approach when you have process safety information, which for existing units, hopefully you have good process safety information when you're doing the HAZOP. Uh, but you might stumble upon, upon some cases where you don't really have a lot of information. You don't have what you need to have. Um, hopefully that's being addressed separately or that you make sure you in the future do have that kind of information you need as that is required for you know process safety management but if you're kind of in a pinch here has it might be a good approach to do when you have less information so even if you're outside of capital design projects and you don't have the much information you need to do this five-year pha regulatory requirement has it might be approach that you can kind of allow you to scale back your specificity use what you have and kind of identify those key hazards that make sure you are addressing and are getting mitigated as part of your existing unit but for the most part, like I said, these can be very complementary to each other, even though they're going to have their specific differences. 
hopefully that was a good overview. I know that was a quick rundown, but uh, if there's any other questions you guys might have on either your specific approach or what you've seen in the past or how you think Hazard and Hassop might vary, uh, feel free to give me a call or drop me an email. I'd be happy to engage with you on any questions or comments you might have. Thanks again for tuning into the webinar, and I hope you guys took away something that uh, was new for you. All right, we'll catch you soon, and thanks a lot.